Hey, it's Rachel. I am going to run an experiment this year using these mesh grow bags to start my seed potatoes. And then I'm planning to transplant them out into the garden. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing really quickly and then talk through why the heck I'm doing this at all because it's not how you normally plant potatoes and then give the results of an initial test that I did over the Christmas break uh, to see how this was going to work, including one unexpected benefit I didn't even think about until it happened. The process is fairly simple. I take one of these mesh grow bags. I put in a few handfuls of potting soil. I do have a little bit of low test fertilizer in here. And I'll note, you don't wanna put the potato at the very bottom of the grow bag. You wanna have room underneath for that potato to start setting its roots and putting tubers on them. I fill the bag about halfway with potting soil, tamp it down, and then place my seed potato on top, making sure that the eyes or the little sprouts to be are facing upwards. I then fill that the rest of the way with potting soil, leaving a few inches at the top of the bag. And then I gently water all of that in place. I made a point of leaving that extra space at the top of the bag because as potatoes grow, the conventional approach is to bury them and continuously add more soil on the stem. As these guys sprout inside the bags, I can easily add a little bit more potting soil until the bag is eventually completely full. For now, I just roll down the tops of the bags to make sure the soil was roughly flush with the top, hung my grow lights directly above that surface so the emerging sprouts get really good bright light, and I have them sitting on my growing shelf inside, and they are going to sit there and hang out for a couple of weeks until I start to see sprouts emerging, at which point I will move those lights up a little bit, add a little more soil as we go to keep covering the stems, and eventually when they get too tall, they'll come out here to the greenhouse to continue growing. That's what I'm doing. Why am I doing it? Good question. If you look at how you conventionally would grow a potato, you would typically plant them outside once your soil temperature reaches 45 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit in the spring. That's usually about two to three weeks after your last frost. You plant them about eight inches deep in the soil and you wait for about two to four weeks and you should start to see these sprouts emerging out of the ground where the potato is growing. As that happens, the parent tuber is slowly being consumed, but once those sprouts emerge and start to leaf out, you will start forming new tubers under the ground as that parent tuber disappears. The sprouts I mentioned emerge in two to four weeks. Those tubers start to form over the next, call it two to four more weeks, so you're now at four to eight weeks total. After that, those tubers do begin to fill out and become larger, regular-sized potatoes underground. And then by the time you hit about 15 to 21 total weeks, or 90 to 120 days after that first sprout emerges, you will have a nice mature harvest of potatoes. The problem for me in trying to follow this approach has to do with the crazy temperatures that I often get in the spring. The ideal growing temperature for potatoes from the day that those sprouts pop up until the day that you harvest them would be 45 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's fairly cool weather. My summers get much, much hotter than that, and potatoes really are a cooler weather crop. Once you get above that temperature, they can really struggle with the heat, they can dry out really easily, and ideally you want to have them growing in this nice sort of sweet spot of temperature band. Cutting to what my weather typically looks like, and I downloaded this from WeatherSpark, and overlaying that ideal growing temperature for potatoes of you know 45 to 70 Fahrenheit, you can see that the sweet spot for me where my sort of midpoint average temperature is in that band only lasts for about 10, maybe 11 weeks. This I get there in late March, and then by the time I hit, call it early to mid-June, I'm starting to exceed those maximum recommended temperatures. If I overlay the recommended approach to planting potatoes, my last frost is in early May. And so going two to three weeks after that puts me in, call it mid to late May. The majority of those potato plants life cycle is going to be growing in temperatures significantly above what is ideal for this particular crop. This led me to ask myself a question of whether there was a better way that I could do this and I landed on an experiment that I wanna try. What if I started these potatoes indoors, grew them in the greenhouse for up to about eight weeks, and then transplanted them out to finish growing? At the eight week mark, I would have a good sense of which potatoes had sprouted and which ones had not. I would know the ones that were duds. And the ones that had sprouted should be starting to form their tubers. They should be a relatively nice sized plant, far from mature, but well established. And we would not yet be at the point where the tubers were really starting to fill out. I didn't want to wait too long because once the tubers do start sizing up, the transplanting process might be too hard on the plant. These mesh bags are not biodegradable. I used to be able to find ones that were biodegradable. If anybody knows where to get those, tell me. These are plastic and they cannot go in the ground. So when I transplant something out of these in the garden, I basically take this long seam on the side and I tear it open and then kind of roll the plant into the ground. 
It generally works really well, but if you had a potato plant with these kind of thin fibrous roots and then fairly honky tubers on them, there's a good chance that they might tear or break off of the root as I'm transplanting, and that defeats the whole point of this. Didn't wanna to wait too late. I think eight weeks is about the sweet spot. If I scoot the timeline over here and I aim to transplant them out into the ground right around the start of that sweet spot, majority of that potato plant's life is going to be at its ideal growing temperature. The other significant advantage of this approach is it's just a heck of a lot easier in terms of labor outside. With a regular approach to potatoes, as they're growing, you're out there in the garden with a shovel, digging soil, burying the stems, and that's just a lot of dirt to move around. It's a lot of physical labor, and it's usually happening at a time of year when I already have a lot of other things going on inside the garden. By starting them in these grow bags and mounding the soil up inside, that's a ton easier. All I'm doing is shoveling some nice lightweight potting mix into these grow bags as they grow, and it's a lot easier than being out in the garden with a big shovel. When I'm ready to transplant them, tear off that bag, drop the plant down, and then bury it again in the soil. And that means that the potatoes can then be at a great depth. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I start fall cover crops around Labor Day every year. I terminate them around Halloween by crimping them down. And then I cover it all with leaves, leave that in place to break down over the winter, shield the soil, and nourish all those lovely little micro herds down below. My preferred approach is not to disturb that. In the spring, I really like to just transplant directly into that and leave the soil covered. It helps prevent weeds, it helps to keep moisture in, and overall, it's a far better approach for me. The conventional method of digging in a trench and hilling it up with potatoes would disturb that entire top layer. I could dig it in and it'd be good for the soil, but I would have a lot more weed pressure as a result and I wouldn't get as much help with moisture retention. And with potatoes, I wanna retain that moisture as much as possible. By doing this transplant approach, dropping them into the hole and then just leaving the cover otherwise intact, I'm really doing a much better job of protecting from weeds and keeping moisture in the soil. So that's a huge win for me too. The catch would mean that I would need to plant them indoors and then have them in the greenhouse basically now. Now just because I want to do something does not mean it's going to work. I did look to see what the temperatures typically are in my greenhouse this time of year to make sure I wasn't just setting myself up for failure. I pulled the historic data of temperatures inside the greenhouse from early January until early March. Our time of year right now in early Feb would be right in the middle here. If I overlay the recommended soil temperatures for potatoes as they're getting planted and started, and then look at where we are, it looks really promising. I've done prior videos on this greenhouse and how the temperature is stabilized by a lot of soil against the south wall. Long story short, this time of year, I really do have a nice steady temperature in here of roughly 45 to 60. This all sounds good on paper, but I have definitely learned the hard way that I always want to test something before I run off and do it at scale. Around Thanksgiving, I had leftover potatoes from making Thanksgiving dinner, specifically some Yukon Golds, and they started to sprout in the pantry. I decided to take that as an opportunity to see if this whole kind of cockamamie idea was going to work. I did plant those Yukon Gold potatoes in grow bags, just like I showed at the beginning of this video. They went in early December. I'll show a temperature chart here of what was happening in the greenhouse at the time. But they went in in early December, and during that time, the temperature in the greenhouse really was around those ideal conditions and they did sprout and they did grow. And I was very happy with the potato plants I was getting out of those grow bags. I was able to easily add soil, roll them up, keep the stems supported. And I went ahead and declared that that was a success. I felt good about the test results. Now, once you drop below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, even an established potato plant starts to struggle a bit. They'll survive down to about 30, but to really grow and survive, they need to be at 40 or above. The greenhouse temperatures in here, when I hit kind of the Christmas and New Year's window, really dropped below that 40 degree point. And at that point, the potatoes really started to struggle. They were dying off. And honestly, I was just distracted. It was Christmas, it was New Year's, we had family, a lot was going on. And as far as I was concerned, the test was complete. I stopped watering them, I just let them die, and I figured that was that. Let me show you the unexpected benefit that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. As I finally got my act together, finished up with the holidays and started cleaning up the mess in the greenhouse. I started dumping the soil out of those bags and I discovered as I did so, something that shouldn't have surprised me. Namely, the potatoes did what potatoes are supposed to do and they had started setting little tubers inside of those grow bags. When the plants died off, those tubers just stayed in the soil and they had been happily hanging out in my greenhouse ever since. As a result, I now have free seed potatoes. And that means if I wanna try and grow some Yukon Golds this year, I have the seed potatoes to do it with literally zero incremental cost to myself. If you would like to grow your own seed potatoes, 
I honestly think you should try this. Now the bags aren't biodegradable, but the good news is they're reusable. That means you could take a sprouted potato in your pantry, throw it in one of these, give it some water, let it live someplace in the right temperature zone until it gets to a certain size, stop watering it, let it die back, and dig through that soil for your little prize at the end of free seed potatoes. I will do an experiment, controlled experiment in the yard this year. I'll have half of the bed done with potatoes started with this method. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, suck it up and do the hard work of the conventional approach on the other half of the bed with the same types of potatoes. So you can get sort of an A versus B experiment and we can see what the outcome was. I may just discover a reason why this was a terrible idea. It would not be the first time that has happened, but so far I'm optimistic about it and I will keep you guys updated on how it goes. Until next time, thanks.